Hello, so I'm back to give you another tutorial on how we can use shapes from our environment to create some abstract kind of artworks. Uh, so far we've worked using a viewfinder where we've selected a, a small area in our environment and kind of broken down um, what we might see as familiar views into something more unfamiliar. And I've also kind of done pick and plonk where we chose three shapes from our environment, uh, changed the scale of them, rotated them, repeated them and created some um, really different kind of ways of working. Uh, so this last one is going to be looking at negative space. So the way I can describe negative space is that uh, when we draw something um, and we're looking at the negative space, we're looking at the areas where the object is not. So everything around where the object is, is what we are drawing. So we're looking for shapes in our environment uh, based on the space that is around the objects that are in front of us. So I want to describe how I might kind of view negative space using this setup. Um, I'm using some, um, this is just a piece of glass from a picture frame. Um, you could use a piece of kind of uh, acetate if you've got any or a plastic pocket uh, that you might use for your ring binders. Um, but you don't need this, um, but this might just help you out to start off with. So on this piece of glass I've drawn a kind of square sort of shape and I've kind of arranged some objects underneath and until I've kind of until I'm happy with the arrangement and I've laid my my glass on top and I just want to kind of draw and indicate to you using this pen um what sort of shapes we'll be kind of using for our negative space so um, again, it's a space in between the objects rather than the objects themselves. So I've got my image on this piece of glass uh, or you might have used a, a piece of acetate or a plastic pocket or you might have it on a, on, on a piece of paper but I want to trace this onto another piece of paper so that um, I have one original and then I have other copies that I make from it. So how I trace this, um, this kind of sheet of... Uh, of glass or plastic, whichever you're using, is I put down a piece of paper and I tape this up so it's nice and tight and flush to the flush to the glass. And then what I'm going to do is hold it up to the light so um, The light will help us see, see everything. So I'll finish doing this and I'll show you the next step. So hopefully you can see as I hold this up to the light, I'm able to see some of the shapes behind made in orange. And what I'm going to do is just draw over these shapes using a, a pen onto this paper so that the, I have a copy of the drawing on glass onto this paper. So now I've got my image on a piece of paper. This is now my original. So I'm able to use this to trace copies of 
um, and always come back to the original if I want to. Um, so I'm going to trace this now, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm using watercolour paper or card, so it's quite hard for you to kind of trace through the image. Even if I do hold it up to the light, it's quite, it's quite difficult. So I'm going to show you another method of tracing. Um, so what I would do is turn this over, flip this over. If you've got a pencil, I'm using a quite a fat graphite, graphite stick here. Um, what you'll, you can use a normal pencil, that's absolutely fine. But what you'll need to do is kind of colour all of this in with graphite, the back of your drawing, your bra your, the back of my, tra my initial trace. I'm going to colour the whole back of it in. Okay. always another good method of uh, tracing so one way you've already seen is holding something up to the light and tracing something through onto another surface this is a this is a really good option if you haven't got the light available or um, you have some kind of like I have really thick paper where the, the light doesn't doesn't kind of come through So I just make sure that all of the lines that I can see from that pen are covered, okay, like this. What I'm going to do then is get my paper that I wanted the image to be on. Maybe I'll show you the reason why I'm going to be using this kind of watercolour paper in a sack. So what I'm going to do is sort of stick this down. I've already got some little corners of masking tape and that's just to secure the paper down whilst I'm drawing so that piece of paper doesn't move anywhere. What we then do is just go over with quite a firm pressure and go over the lines in pencil you could you it could be biro, but that pressure on the tip of our pencil is really key. What's happening underneath, hopefully, should be, is where we've drawn, where we've coloured in. This line that I'm drawing is going to trace and print these lines onto that watercolour paper I've got underneath. I'm using watercolour paper because it's nice and sturdy so if I want to paint or um, cut or anything like that we've got some nice thick paper but you can use card, you can use normal paper, it's really up to you. Um, you could do it on some cardboard if you've had any deliveries in. You could do this onto different kind of magazine papers. If you wanted to collage different papers, you could do it onto fabric. So this top copy is your template really. You've got this to work from all th at all times now. I'm gonna lift up a corner. So you should be able to see that I've got a mark underneath so that's really that's really good to see so it's traced that image is traced onto there now now I really like this as it is you know I like the shapes um, I like that it's sort of we've taken shapes and essentially sort of taken from scissors and really expanded it and we're gonna take it a little bit further now so what I'm going to do next is just going to go over this a little bit so the line becomes a little bit kind of broader, just more easy for me to see. Not all of the ones, I can see lots of them. 
Now you can use the scissors for the next activity. What I'm going to do um, is cut this these lines out. So we're going to end up with some stencils. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to play around with the shapes on a piece of paper. I want to change the arrangement of them. I want to break this down even further. And you might even make something sculptural with them as well. So I'm going to get on and do that. You can use the scissors, be really, really careful. I'm going to use a cutting knife. Again, be really, really careful. Don't cut in the way of your hand. So when I'm cutting, my, this hand is, is away from wherever this blade is going. So if the blade is going this way, my hand is in the other, in the opposite direction. Okay, I'm going to hold the paper down and I'm going to cut like this. You can use the scissors, but what I'd like to see is our crisp shapes, something like this. You want to see some nice crisp shapes like this cut out at the end. Okay, so I'm going to get on with that next. turning my paper in the most uh, efficient way for me to cut so instead of me trying to move my hand around where I'm where I've got the blade I'm moving the paper so essentially all I'm doing is cutting relatively simple lines that are in almost kind of in straight lines um, so I'm not having to overwork my cutting hand. really love this as a shape, really like that, <laughs> could just work with this. I also really like the leftovers, I also really like this sort of shape as well. Um, there's definitely ways in which we can use this in a piece of work. You could use this as a stencil to sort of sponge through um, with paint. I quite like the idea of collaging this and putting some papers, like textured colours and papers behind. For example, if I go and get another piece of paper. This is another piece of paper with a different pattern on it. It's quite interesting to start seeing, you know, things you can do when you layer the cutout uh, with another piece of paper underneath. Yeah, really like that. But for now, we've got some. Uh, well, there's something like that we work with, that I might work with later on. 
Um, but for now we've got these shapes, which I'm going to use to create some different compositions. And what I'm going to do for that is, let's put my lid back on this blade and put that away. Um, so what I'm going to do is be quite daring and sort of chop these up. So I'm going to sort of take snips to it. I feel quite delighted when I do things like that. Suddenly what's what was so held together before has become really playful and impermanent. And we can draw these down so we can sort of play around with the arrangement of these shapes and these become again stencils that we can use. Um, so these are kind of original stencils which I might kind of keep the same as the original piece of paper. And I'd like to kind of draw these out onto um, a piece of paper in an arrangement that I like. So you can do that, okay? So play around, you can repeat them, if you want to duplicate them in some way, um, change them around, rotate them and things. And this could be a painting in itself. Um, we're going to do, be doing something a little bit different. So I've, just to show you what I've been, I've just started is I've drawn around using these cutouts as a template. And I've drawn them in a position which I'm quite happy with on this piece of paper. Um, now this could be a piece in itself. Uh, you could, you might really like the minimal look, the as minimal aspect of it. You kind of, you could kind of create a background colour and play with these shapes all day, just sort of rearranging them, repeating them, and scaling them up and whatnot. I'm going to show you something, something different. What I'm going to do is finish colouring these in. And then what I'm going to do is cut them out uh, again, and we're going to I'll show you how we we slot them together to make sort of a sculptural form. So these are kind of block colours. So I'm going to do some patterns on these ones. I'm using a different colour. Let's go for a fun colour, shall we? Using a highlighter pen, which I think that would be really fun to use. I do like contrast in my work. I like contrast in texture, putting two different textures together, putting two different sort of colours together. So we've got quite bold primary colours, and we've got this really, really artificial colour, you know, like this neon kind of see on warning signs and things around the environment, especially in urban places or construction sites. Let's do that. I might do a pattern for this one then next. Just a scribbly pattern. Let's do an orange set. A bit of fun with orange. So I'll do a little swirly pattern. So this sculptural business that I'm gonna show you is best done on stiffer card. So if you have got any to hand, tracing those little templates onto the card is a really it's a really good idea. Cool. Quite like that. It's fun. So yeah, what we're going to do is cut these out now. Okay, so again, use the scissors, be really careful. You can use your craft knife if you like. I'm going to use the scissors. 
actually no I'm going to use a craft knife let's do that again I mean I've chosen to use a craft knife last minute just because I want to have another piece of paper with these shapes cut through them if I use the scissors I would waste a lot of the I would waste a lot of the the paper by kind of making cuts from each edge so using a knife if we're able to if, you, if you're safe if you've got, if you've got supervision you need to be really careful and you should always have someone around to help out if you've not done it before So we've worked in a really, really different way, haven't we? Taken drawings from observation and suddenly they've become weird shapes like this. How fun. I love working in this way. Frank Stella is a really interesting artist who does lots of shaped paintings. And this is a way that you could practice that. Technique. Paintings don't always need to be flat. They don't always need to be on certain materials. Drawing doesn't always need to be exact. Playing with your materials, what you have to hand, your environment, things that you see. So again, I've got a piece with negative space, with negative spaces cut in, which I'll use another time. But for now, I'm going to be using this, these pieces of paper, these card, pieces of card. I'm just going to trim those bits. What you need to do is then colour the other side of them. Now you can either colour them the same colour, or you can mix it up. Your choice. Up to you. I'm going to do them a bit different, I think. Just trim these off. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put my knife back with the blade on the end. Cool, I'm going to colour these back in. Let's do them. A couple of them different colours. Two or four. I'll do this one around.
So I'm going to show you next is a really interesting way and a really interesting interpretation of our initial negative space drawing. So we've got these shapes from our initial negative space drawing. Really, really fun, really brightly coloured. Um, now what I've done with these two is I've cut down halfway down from the top edge down to the centre. Okay, so that's a, just a little slit. And with this one, I've cut from this bottom edge up halfway. Okay, so it's got little legs as well. And then what happens when you put these two together like that is they're able to stand like so. So you end up seeing those different patterns that you've kind of created all the way around. Now imagine, you know, you've got lots of materials around, you're able to get pieces of wood. Now why, where stops, where does it stop? Like this is a small model for a really large sculpture, isn't it? You know, we could scale this up into, and taking this into wood or metal. There's no end really where you could take this. So you just have to kind of look at your sculpture and sort of think, okay, well, what else could I do to this? What else do I need? Do I want that to be stacked on top of there? You know, do I want that to be there? Do I want something to be there? I'll put something this side. Let's make a little slit there. Make a little... I always find doing some smaller slits to start off with just helps you kind of position and see where to see where you're happy. Quite like that, kind of hovering at the top there. Well, not hovering, but um, it's kind of floating a bit off of the ground, isn't it? And this one, I wish I have that one to be. Might get that to sort of sit at the back there. Yeah, let's do that. So what do I need to be able to do that? That needs to slot on there, doesn't it? So, slip down. I'm going to slip there again. Initially, quite small. Just so that you want, really, the ends to join. So I might need to make one of the slits a little bit longer. stands as you like it to. Again this is just with watercolour paper. If you've got card that might stand in a much better kind of position for you. Let me put it to face the other way. There we go. Cool. So yeah keep playing around with it until you get a shape and a composition that you like. And there you've got a really interesting shaped painting. based on a, a negative space drawing.